Hi, it's me, I'm Char, and today I'll be showing you how I made my personal website. If there's one thing I realized working in web development, it's that everyone uses the same type of layouts and templates for their website. Which makes sense in today's climate, right? A personal website nowadays is just a digital calling card to the point where people kind of just forego having one all together and choose instead to have a list of links to their socials or things they sell. For me, the thing is, I grew up with a lot of fun websites and I adored them. Surfing the web back then wasn't just scrolling on Twitter or Instagram, and it was more of looking at how people chose to express themselves in this sort of public digital scrapbook. I even used to have my own back when I was eight, which by the way, I found out it was saved in the internet archive, but unfortunately, none of the pages or images load anymore. I remember that was a time where everyone's personal websites tried to be as fun as possible, and I personally had small flash games and pixel art dolls I drew on mine, and a little guestbook people could leave comments on. And looking back on that, it made me think a lot about how nowadays, websites tend to be very generic and even kind of soulless, <laughs> which, which feels like a mean thing to say, I'm sorry. Let's just, let's just say less soul. There's, there's less soul in it. <laughs> Going back to making my website back in 2023, I was one of the leads for our front-end web dev initiatives, and I decided a great way to get some extra practice at home was to create my own personal website again after all of these years. And I ended up with something like this. In terms of practicing for my job, I learned a lot, but what was more meaningful from the experience for me was that I had a lot of fun and I loved sharing it with friends. As a person who's often online, it felt like I was showing them around my digital home as opposed to just linking someone my Instagram. It was a website for me. I was my own client, I could do whatever I wanted with it, which I guess is what made it so fun. I've gotten a couple emails asking how I went about making this, usually from university students who stumble on my website, and I thought it would be fun to share the process through a video. And honestly, if it inspires someone else to do something creative and fun, then I think it's well worth it. I think the internet could use a bit more personality and a bit more fun. <laughs> As much as I enjoy doing things on the fly, projects like these do benefit a lot from proper planning, especially when there are so many different moving parts. Although I'll be talking about how I made the website from the ground up, I did have to update it a little bit before releasing this video since there were a lot of things I wanted to change. For that, I used Milanote to plan how I'd go about it. Sponsor jump scare! <laughs> But yeah, I do use Milanote quite often for projects that I can't just plan out linearly. Like instead of a to-do list or notepad that goes straight down, I get to project my messy thoughts out into a canvas of sticky notes and images, which makes it easy for me to brainstorm creative projects. Since sometimes, while writing one important thing, I think of another important thing, and I just need to tack it on somewhere. These boards operate like desktops with folders and icons, so you can put boards in your boards and format your info however you like. In my case, I made a subboard for my theme colors and a mood board for the general feel I want for the site. For my website update in particular, I used Milanote to compile all the info I needed to take a look at and the changes I needed to make per web page. You can even doodle on the board and on top of your sticky notes if that feels more intuitive for you. I've been using this web tool since I was in college. I used it for my thesis and extracurricular work since it's really good with flowcharts and just getting ideas out there and piecing them together. I've also used it for games, planning out merch, and like I did for this project, making mood boards. I like it because it's very uncomplicated and pretty straight to the point with how it works. But even then, there are options for color and style customization in case you're the bullet journal type who wants to make things look neater and prettier. Or you could be kind of a goblin like me, just <laughs> scribbling and writing whatever. Milanote is free and has no time limit. It's a collaborative tool you can access through your browser, so if you have a friend along with you on your project, you guys can plan it together in real time. There are even free templates for you to choose from in case you need a starting point for your creative project. If you're interested in trying it out, feel free to check out the link in my description to sign up. 
A warm thank you to Milanote for sponsoring this video. I already had an idea of what I wanted my website to look like. I wanted it to be interactable, with draggable windows, almost like a desktop. I wanted it to be cute, and I wanted it to reflect my art style and my personality. With that in mind, I started on the wireframes. Wireframes are essentially a drawn-out basic structure of your website. It's usually done in a very simple way, with no colors and just placeholders for how you want things on the website to look like. It's also so you don't put too much effort in a structure your client might want big revisions on. In this scenario, I was my own client, so I just went straight ahead to adding colors and images while I was laying it all out, because it was just for me. <laughs> I started with the design first over programming and building the structural elements of the website. I am more of an artist than a programmer, so having the mock-up as the first course of action was what made the most sense to me. I used Figma. Figma balls. <laughs> I used, I used Figma to make the wireframes for my website. I like to think of it as advanced PowerPoint. <laughs> Maybe if PowerPoint and Photoshop had a baby and it pursued web development in college or something. Or like Canva, but very specifically for web design. I still use this tool for web dev and planning out UI for games and software. And the nice thing about it is you can create prototypes of your website and test out how it looks on different devices without needing to program anything, buttons and links and all. It used to show what CSS styling was needed to make the element you're working on, but I think they paywalled it recently, which sucks because I like that feature, but uh, something something capitalism. For the people watching who might be unfamiliar with what HTML or CSS is, think of HTML as a plain, untextured house in The Sims and CSS as the wallpaper and flooring and furniture you place after. HTML helps provide the structure and CSS helps decorate it. There's a bit of an initial learning curve to both, as with all things, but once you get the hang of it, HTML and CSS are pretty easy to implement and understand. Anyway, back to the design, I was very much inspired by my memories and my feelings of Y2K sites, but I wanted to incorporate my current style and use more modern tools to build it. I wanted my website to be a place where people would want to tinker around and click on stuff for fun, and there are a lot of ideas I had for that. I was even thinking of making a little map a la Neopets. But I decided to go for a mix of accessible portfolio site and something that wouldn't take too much time for me. It was supposed to be a practice project for my job, after all. <laughs> and so I ended up with this layout. I also made a dark mode version, which I made because although I am a light mode enjoyer, I know for a fact most people enjoy dark mode more. So I made a little nighttime version. And then I just kept adding to these wireframes every time I thought of something fun to add, since it was easier for me to visualize here than through script. As a little segue, let me explain front-end and back-end web development real quick to those who might not be super familiar. Front-end is essentially everything the user sees on your site and can interact with. Your images, buttons, menus, the whole design. Back-end, on the other hand, deals with the things people can't see. That's your databases, servers, API calls, etc. It's script that makes sure that the website is performant and is actually functional. I think it might be obvious what type of development I lean into more. I do struggle with back-end quite a bit, so working within my boundaries, I made sure that the site was more on the fun, simple side, over functionalities that might need a little extra out of me. Frameworks are pretty much templates for starting your website. They're a set of components that give you a foundation to work with, so you don't have to start completely from scratch. In a way, you can think of it as a game engine like Unity or Godot. In this scenario, I used React, which is a free and popular framework that I was also learning for work at that time. There are so many tutorials and user-made packages and libraries out there for React as well, which makes it easier to build different parts of the website. I'll talk about that more later. On top of React, I initially used Gatsby.js, which is a framework that works with React to build static websites. By static website, I mean my website is the same regardless of who looks at it. There isn't a database or an account system where it's personalized for different users. Though I ended up switching from Gatsby to Next.js recently, mostly because development there felt more streamlined and also because a friend strongly recommended it to me. Alongside all of those, I use a different mix of libraries and packages to make things a little more convenient to build. 
I used to use Bulma as my main component library. Essentially, it's a library where I can take element templates like buttons and cards from, but I ended up switching to Tailwind CSS because I wanted full customizability for my website components. Anyway, the actual programming experience was the same as all my other programming experiences. Frustrating and satisfying. If you watched my other videos before, I think you might be able to tell that I derive a lot of satisfaction from creating things, even if the creation process is a bit of a struggle. Programming is not my strongest suit, believe it or not. I quite literally took computer science in college because I was convinced I wouldn't be able to learn it by myself and also something something job security. In this field, I am very average, so I did have to go through a lot of tutorials. I think my biggest struggle while I was making this was the window feature. I wanted my website to look like a desktop where you could click icons to open web pages, and I had to figure out how to make the windows draggable and stack on top of each other. While I was updating the website, actually, the library I used to help me implement the dragging functionality wasn't compatible with the React version I upgraded to. So I had to scrap that whole system and rewrite everything with a different library, which was kind of stressful, I'm not gonna lie. Luckily, there are a lot of people in the community that create packages you can just download onto your React project. For example, I could have made this waving water part of the background from scratch, but I would have probably spent hours figuring it out. Instead, there was a package called React Wavify, which just let me import a wave with custom properties I could tweak. I could have also poured hours into figuring out how to make sounds play, but packages like Howler and Use Sound have given me a more accessible way to go about it. I'm super grateful for these devs and their extensive documentation. They update these regularly, by the way, and they provide all of these packages for free for you to play around with. It's awesome. I feel like I'm scrapbooking, but all the paper and glue and stickers are free. The one thing on my site that was explicitly back-end was my contact window. It was a little form you could use to send messages straight to my work email, and I used an automation service called Make to help send the email over to me. The thing is, I was worried that once I posted this video, there would be a high chance for spam if the number of visitors went up. So I decided to just leave an email button for now. I've never outright publicized my website, so this is kind of its first foray outside of that one tweet reply I made back then. I really liked it though, the contact window. It would show a little success, your message has been sent with a heart before. I'd love to bring it back next time once I find the right way to go about it. But yeah, I made components, made them work with each other, tested them out until I was happy, and then went, yeah, okay, I'll put this up online. I want to show it to my friends. Before placing it out there, I did a quick design and accessibility check. My former boss sent me a website called Checklist Design that gives you a list of things to check and consider before wrapping up your website. I like that it gives you pretty specific things to check, like did you make a toggle for dark and light mode, or do you have variants for your buttons when they're disabled or hovered or pressed on, things you might miss. There are also websites like WebAIM or Web Accessibility in Mind that give you a complete guide to the web content accessibility guidelines, which help you check on design elements that might be difficult for other users to use. These are always good to have because I believe that the more people who can enjoy your website, the better. I really like the word deploy. It feels like I'm an engineer releasing a rocket into space. But in this scenario, deploying essentially means putting your website out there in the public for everyone to see. When you're making a website this way, you usually just test it out via your local host. In other words, only you can see your website while you're building it. Once it comes to the point where you're confident enough to put it out there, you'll have to deploy it to a server who serves your website. There are usually different types of deployment for testing, but since this project is just me, I hooked it up to Vercel, a server host, and straight up just deployed it. I used to use Google Firebase to help host my website back in 2023, but since I changed to the Next.js framework, which is developed by Vercel, I figured it would be more seamless to just switch to hosting it with Vercel instead. I linked it up to my domain name, and voila, my website is public. Then I asked a bunch of friends to test it out for me just to make sure it worked. One issue that I did notice with my website before was that it had high download usage, but I realized it was just because I didn't optimize my images. I converted them from PNGs to WebPs, which made the load a lot lighter. And that's pretty much how I ended up with my website. 
I'm still pretty happy with it today, and I'm thinking of a few other things to add in the near future. One thing I'm planning to do is a journal of all my Tamagotchi pets. I fell down the Tamagotchi rabbit hole recently, and I've been logging my experiences with some of the pets after a friend showed me an old Tamagotchi public obituary. I thought the idea was so funny that I wanted to make it myself, and then I was like, oh yeah, I, I probably can if I try, so that's gonna be the next thing I'll try to make. I think it's a fun idea. On the topic of should you be making your own website, mm, it's up to you, but I highly encourage it. I think there is a lot of fun to be had on websites outside the basic feeds of Twitter and Instagram. I love seeing people's digital scrapbooks, and I think sometimes it looks difficult to get into, but it's actually not that bad. Plus, if you're a designer and you're someone who is really, really opposed to learning programming, you could always try out a website builder or design the mock-up yourself and look for someone freelance to program it for you. It's just that there's so much internet out there, and I can't believe we've just stopped being creative with it. Where did all the personality of the websites from the early 2000s go? And we don't even have to exactly mimic the styles of Y2K. For some reason, we just stopped having fun with these and prioritized a standard template for e-commerce and digital business cards instead. And they all look kind of the same. Where's the whimsy, you know? In an ultra-modern era where we have access to so many tools and website builders, we're at the point where you don't even need to know how to program to create your own website. And I just feel like that's such a missed opportunity for people to make cool things on the internet. Even Tumblr kind of standardized everyone's web page when you click on them instead of linking you to their actual stylized Tumblr site. Like, look at this website dedicated to a person's cats. Or this website full of a guy's ocean creature clip art. Or this website stylized like a medieval stronghold with a dedicated page to his wife. Or this very, um, passionate web page. <laughs> Hello ladies, let me tell you my hobbies. I like to play chess and chat with ladies on the internet. <laughs> if you ever want to explore how fun personal websites were back then, check out Cameron's World. It's a collection of old GeoCities website archives with links to their respective internet archive pages. It's a super fun look. Big thank you to my friend Waki for showing me this. If you're not into web surfing, because in this day and age, it can be scary, games like Hypnospace Outlaw give the same vibe. Highly recommend you check these out, they're really fun. And that concludes my video. Thank you for watching. I know I usually make more art and animation-centric videos, but I just thought this might be fun to share. I want people to know that things like this are possible to do at home, and I'm really passionate about this topic, actually, and I'm thinking of making another video in the near future about the Y2K website boom, since that was a big part of my childhood. We'll see. Thank you to my very cute lasagna supporters shown on screen. <laughs> I'm always really grateful that people support me and the little projects I make. You guys are so nice to me. Thank you as well to Milanote for sponsoring the video. I am always really happy to be sponsored by products I actually use, and Milanote's one of them games I've been playing recently, I've come back to my childhood hidden object phase, so I've been playing a lot of Artifacts Mundi games. They're so... something. <laughs> They're very camp. The voice acting is not very good, the cutscenes are also not very good, the plots are honestly insane, but it's so entertaining, I don't know how to explain. I'm like five games in deep, and I've enjoyed each one very much in a very I am cringe but I am free way. They're just so good, and they scratch my casual puzzle game itch. Mm, yeah. Okay, that's all. Bye.